now let me talk about uh, in more details about the performance portability laser. So we have our own uh, performance portability layer based on vendors uh, C++ solutions, like which means it's CUDA for NVIDIA, HIP for AMD GPUs, and SICKO one API for, for Intel. And in the beginning, years ago, we, we tried different uh, uh, options, and eventually we settled down to just write our own uh, stuff. And it, it's much more flexible, and uh, we, it's easy for us to, to fine tune the performance for you know, uh, our own applications. So now I want to show you something uh, it's like a, how we actually implemented. This is kind of like a, a toy example, not exactly the code we use inside, but give you the idea. The, the, so I just want to, the, the thing is actually not that complicated. It's actually, the, the concept of this is actually simple. It's because of the CUDA support more than C++ Lambda function stuff. Now, suppose, suppose we have the CPU code. It's a simple copy from say one vector to another, A equal to B, one dimensional. And if you have a, if you're going to uh, write in raw CUDA, what you're going to do is you just write uh, a a so-called global function. This is a CUDA keyword. So this is a, a so-called global function, and you pa and the global function takes three arguments, and then inside you have to compute a this in int i is basically the global thread ID. And you actually have to do this test if i less than n. That's because um, the CUDA, they always launch threads in blocks. If you specify the block, for example, in this case, I specify it's a, each CUDA block has 256 threads. And you could, so then it's always a multiple of 256. But the, your number of elements n may not be a multiple of 256. So you, you, so you have to do a test to make sure that, uh, you know, there is actually element at that position. So, <clears throat> and you can see that, that's why it's kind of like, a, uh, it's kind of uh, annoying because, you know, the CPU code, you just simply say A equal to B, but now you have to say, oh, if you have to compute the global index and, uh, and do a test and then, once you have this global function, then you can call this global function, but you also have to use this uh, triple chevron syntax. And so the first argument here is the number of GPU blocks you, you want to have in this kernel. And this is the number of threads in each block. And so if you don't, if you're not bothered by writing those things, say you, you can write in raw CUDA, that's all fine. But if it's a, you want to run on uh, like uh, AMD GPUs, you have to use slightly different syntax uh, or, you know, Intel GPU, the sickle is actually in some sense quite different from CUDA. So, so you, you may end up with writing multiple versions. So what the AMX offers is uh, things like this parallel four function. So, the first argument n is the uh, iteration, you know, range. So, yeah, n element here, and then you just write a a so-called lambda function, and the, the lambda function does is copy data from uh, one array to another, and uh, so this equal sign here means it's a C plus plus syntax means captured by value. So in this case, what, what does the capture means? So you see in this lambda function, this i is a local, it is, a, is this function's a, a parameter. So that's, that's belong to this function. But the a and b is, a, you know, something outside. In, in principle, a and b are, are local to the uh, function itself, but uh, 
uh, it's because it's being captured. That's another story. But anyway, so so you can see you, you somehow kind of magically use the a and b in this function, and what it does is um, is the uh, lambda function will capture the the a and b by value. A and b they are pointers, not uh, real data pointed by the pointers. So the capture by value thing is actually cheap thing. So what the CUDA runtime is going to do is they're going to copy those things from CPU memory to device memory for you. And uh, when this kernel is wrong, the A and B is already on GPU, the point itself, not to the data. And uh, they, it, this AMX GPU device is a micro, it's basically just, uh, uh, this is a CUDA keyword on the score, on the score device. And, and here on the right, just show you the implementation detail. So the implementation, is based, instead of writing your own global function, we have a function template inside MIX. Let's say, let's, we'll, just, we'll call it launch global. So just take a single argument and just write on GPU. And, uh, and this is the parallel four functions implementation here you, you're calling on the left. And what it does is it hide all the details from the user. So the user can write a much cleaner code than, you know, compared to what you have to write in CUDA. And if it's a, a 3D power of four, uh, it's, the implementation is kind of similar to the 1D power of four. And in this case, I show you, uh, is we have two F3 boxes and, uh, and what do we do here for the, I mentioned earlier, the F3 box cannot use it directly on GPU. So we create something called array four. So this thing is a simple type. And then these two, A and B, you can use it directly on GPU. So the, the, this parallel four is very similar to the 1D version. And here, this is a box and it's a three. So Give, tell you the, what's the uh, 3D loops uh, index range. And internally, what we actually have to do is, uh, um, so we compute the thread ID and, uh, and figure out what's the 3D index IJK is. And so one very important thing I want to emphasize is the separation of ownership and access. So F3 box only data and it has a lot of things that are not suitable for GPU, but array four is a very simple object that with a pointer and a few integers inside. And it's very easy to make it work on GPU. And I want to emphasize it because, you know, if you, in your code, you have a complicated class, oh, how I'm going to make this work for on GPU. And often it comes down to really simply, okay, can I like extract the, you know, certain things from this class that, you know, get what I need for GPU and make that thing a simple class. And then, you know, you can do something like, if, for example, here we could just say, say fab.array. And in your case, you know, you can have your complex class and call function and return a simple data, uh, you know, container. And that thing can be used on GPU. You can make it work on GPU. And uh, uh, let's see, yeah, okay. Let's, other things are not that important, okay. So, and it, so the, now let's talk about the reduction on GPU because doing reduction on GPU is sometimes uh, not that uh, trivial. So AMX provides various uh, reduction functions. Here are two examples. Uh, this is just want to show you, uh, so, what you can do with the reduction function is very flexible. So, so in this first example, we're doing a reduce sum, and we also do a max. And the sum is on a double precision number. The max is on a integer number. And it's simply a function call. Tell it what you want to do, and this is the a 3D iteration space and a, a, this lambda function 
Well, just uh, simply, so what is your, uh, you know, data you want to, to perform the reduction, say in this case, let's say double X into M, and you just return it. And then uh, MX is going to do this on GPU and return the data in a tuple. Um, so it actually performs two types of reduction in one GPU kernel. And here's another example. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's not always just a simple, like a uh, building types like integer or double, you may have some other things. For example, in this case, uh, what we're going to find is what's the maximum uh, element in say a vector. And not only that, but I also want to, oh, what's the uh, exact, what's the location of that uh, uh, max value? So, so, so in this case is the value itself, the, this PI is being used to, for comparison, whether it's mean or max, and in this, but we also want to attach additional data to it. So this, and you, this is how you can do it. And in this case, we used the uh, AMX uh, uh, class, but you can have write your own class, you know, if you have some other special requirement. And we also have a, a prefix some function that works on GPU and this, uh, the interface is based on like the user providing two Lambda functions. And this is actually uh, uh, for, it turns out for C, for a lot of things, uh, you know, you do it on CPU, the uh, this prefix sum function may not be that uh, important. But for a lot of GPU operations, it turns out to be actually extremely important. And we use it extensively in uh, MX particle code. Um, so now I want to talk about some uh, performance thing. Like G in the, the kernel fusion is a, a way to uh, improve uh, performance. So I already showed you uh, one thing is uh, like if you have a multifab and it, uh, one way to do it is you can have a, a iterator looping over all the boxes in your multifab and you launch a GPU kernel. But you can also launch a single GPU kernel working on multiple boxes. This is how you can, you can do it. And also sometimes you, you for example, uh, when we first started with like a, uh, when we need to do MPI communication, well, what we do is uh, we copy data into a buffer for GPU communication. But the thing is that the AMR grids can be very complicated. You have a lot of edges, corners. So we end up with, for many simulations, we end up with hundreds of really small kernels. Sometimes that kernel only copy like one double precision number. And if you do that, you know, naive way of doing this would be, you know, I loop over all my, you know, the readings I want to, to, to copy the data and uh, launch a parallel four and uh, do something. And then you end up with hundreds of small GPU kernels. It's really slow. So, so uh, one solution we uh, came up is just, uh, you know, you create a vector of all the data, you need for GPU kernels, and we have a parallel function. Parallel four function can fuse all those things into a single GPU kernel. And that's uh, much fast, order magnitude fast, if, if you have hundreds of small kernels. You know. And we can also uh, uh, optimize kernels with the runtime parameters. And the runtime parameters is, you know, it often makes you use, for example, uh, uh, here's some uh, numbers on the right. This is number of registers. You know, the original kernel has 256 and then reduced a little bit. It doesn't look like so much, but the scratch space, which means the uh, register over, you know, flow, the spill. So you see this reduced a lot. And, uh, and this is the, uh, a warp X kernel for a warp X kernel that, that improved performance a lot by using this kind of uh, technique. 
and uh, I think this might be the last slide. So now I want to talk about the memory arena because the memory allocation using CUDA malloc is actually uh, really expensive. So, so AMX provides a number of memory arenas. To, so what we do is we allocate, uh, pre-allocate a lot of memory up front, and then when you call AMX the arena to allocate memory, we just give you the memory, and uh, when you free it, we take it back, but we don't give it back to the system, unless you explicitly want to tell us to give it back to the system. Otherwise, we keep it. So the next time when you ask for memory again, we just hand out the memory without the cost of uh, CUDA malloc. And it also has some interesting things we can do with it, like a, um, like a vector resize. So when you resize a vector, for example, a normal C++ vector, it has a concept of uh, like a size and a capacity. So the capacity in some sense is to re reserve the size for that vector. But if, when you resize it to go beyond its capacity, and the C++ vector has to do is they have to reallocate some new memory. And once they reallocate the new memory, they have to copy the data from the old memory to the new memory. But since we control our memory arena, we often find opportunities that we don't actually have to reallocate the memory because, uh, you know, even though the vector's capacity is, is small, but uh, what's in the arena, actually, we have arena immediately after that uh, allocated memory, so we can attach to it so much easier. Uh, it's, a, it's a cheap way to, to do resize. And uh, there are also uh, 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 one thing we call the async arena. So here's the uh, example. So if, if we like some temporary a free box and launch a GPU kernel that uses it. And then you actually have to call a GPU synchronize. The reason for that is that the GPU kernels are asynchronous to the host. So the at the end of this uh, thing, there is a destructor will destroy the GPU memory while your GPU kernel might still be running. So that's going to be a memory error. And what we provide is we have something called the async arena it makes the async safe. It will not delete the memory until it's safe to do so. And we have different types of arenas for you know different purposes. Okay, that's uh, the end of my talk. Thank you, Wei Chen. Sorry, you know, timing was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you could unshare your screen. Okay, you know. let me see you stop sharing. Yeah, okay, good. Okay.